Okay. Back to what I was saying. I wanted to talk about uh, Eliana and them parents. We got a lot of parents that don't get along with each other. A lot of them. I'm not perfect. Cause me and my baby father didn't get along with each other either. But I've told that story about what went on with me and him and not what exactly went on, but how we became how we became friends. Cause we used to go at each other head, baby. It was nothing for him to go at me and it was nothing for me to go at him. And I always wanted to get along with him for the kids' sake. Because I grew up without my dad and the man who my mom brought into my life for her father figure was a great man. Great, great man. She couldn't have done better if I'd have picked him out my damn self. Couldn't have done better. Great man. That man came in, treated us like we was his kids, and that man didn't have no kids. And my mama had all girls. And that man never tried to touch us in no sexual way. That man was, was more than a father. And I've told this in some of my old videos. My own father stayed, you know, right in the same city that we stayed in. Well, like he was somewhere else living. He lived in the same city we stayed in. But he wouldn't come see us and wouldn't do for us. But my stepdad did. And my mom and daddy, my mom, I had a sweet mom. I have a sweet, 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 sweet mom. She don't like to uh, organ do all that cut up unless you push her and it takes a lot for her to get to that point when she get to that point people know her so they you must done some effed up crap for her to be coming at you like that or talking like that. she don't do that that ain't her but my daddy was an asshole still is an asshole I don't know who picked him out for her when she did that well, she did. But I wish she'd be better. And he took advantage of my mom. And he mistreated her. And he did, I mean, he dogged her out. He did her bad. And since he didn't want the mama, and my mama left him, he didn't want the mama. No, the mama didn't want him no more. Well, he didn't want us. He didn't want the kids. So he, she was raised as a single parent. And I'm telling you, that woman worked night and day. Sometimes that woman worked 12, 13, 14 hour shifts to make sure that we got the things that we needed. We needed, because that's what my parents bought off. They bought off need, not want. We got off a need. If you need, you're going to get. If you don't need and you just want, you're going to get that to a holiday next Christmas. And maybe Easter. And maybe back then they celebrated Juneteenth. You might got a little outfit for Juneteenth or purse shoes or something. But it just wasn't no she bought what you wanted. No. I'm you got what you needed. But I wanted to say, the parents and a lot of what's wrong with that little girl, Eliana, is her mama and daddy. Y'all fought a lot amongst the kids. And the kids grew up seeing a lot of that. And that has really, really, really fucked them kids up. Now that they become adults, they don't know how to be in serious relationships. They want a, a relationship but it's fictional 
because of what the shit that they've seen. And y'all didn't even think about the kids. That's one thing parents we don't do when we get in and have these babies by these men. We don't think about the kids. How much hurt this is going to cause on the kids. How much pain this is going to cause for these kids. How this is going to play affecting these kids' life when they grow up. All we think about, and I'm including myself in that, even though my kids are grown, and I don't have no problem uh, with my kids, and they don't have no problem in no relationships. Not the kind of stuff that uh, Elysio and Lily, uh, whatever name, Lily, Vilio, Velvet, I don't know what to call this motherfucker. They got so many damn names that they're having. I've always wanted to get along with my kid's father, but it was him who didn't want to get along with me because I moved on and found something else and he wasn't ready to deal with that. Well, I'd ask him to come back. He didn't want to come back because he got out here. You know how you men do. Get out here and you find Betty Bop and you and Betty Bop go to do the hip hop. So he didn't find Betty Bop and they was out here doing the hip, 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 hip hop that he didn't want to come back home. So I'm like, okay. Since you don't want to come back home, then it's time for me to move on, bro. I got to do what I got to do, bro. So I moved on. But in the process of me moving on, he found out that I moved on. He was mad. Well, how long am I supposed to sit here and wait? And what am I supposed to do when you say you don't want to be bothered in the relationship no more? I'm going to just sit around here and say, okay. Well, I'll wait till he get through with Julie, Brenda, Linda, and Cindy. And I'll just be sitting over here and wait. Some of y'all do that. I ain't her. I ain't built like that. That ain't for me. If the shit over, it's over. I'll be hurt for a minute or two. But I'm going to move the fuck on. Because you already done told me what you want to do. Okay? But Velvet... I hooked up with this man because of what she saw as the parent do. And y'all didn't make it no better, parents. Instead of y'all trying to say, well, at least let's put our differences aside just for these kids. He ain't fake it in front of these kids. I have faked it in front of my damn kids just for my kids to be happy. For him to be at birthday party. I'm sitting on that grid in my motherfucking TV. Calling you stupid, ignorant motherfucker. But yo, my baby, yo, baby, I baby, won't you him? So I'm going to keep quiet. There's a sacrifice that you have to do when it comes to these kids. And nonsense shit. Because if not, you get kids like what Elysio have over there. All them kids is man messed the fuck up because they had some kind of trauma that went on in their life that they didn't get help for. And nobody tried to help them. And then they ran across this nut butthole and he got his hooks in them. And he knew they was fucked up. Ain't nothing like fucking with a person that know that you got a fucked up mind. And they think they smarter than you. Because they gonna fuck you up with they mind. No, no, you gotta have my mind. No, nobody have to have your mind. Let them have their own fucking mind. Why don't you have your mind? I have my motherfucking mind. And we just go on by our day and be like that. No, you got to think like I think. I don't want to be with nobody who want me to think like they think. And I don't want you thinking like I'm thinking. But Elysio saw that these kids was fucked up and had went through some fucked up shit. And he felt like, well, he grew up in that little old... Uh, home care thing. So he feel like, well, I just fuck with people who been broken like me. 
but he break them harder than what they've already been broke. And if these kids ever get to come home, these kids gonna need some major, major counseling. Maybe for the rest of their life. Cause this man, excuse me, excuse me, has really tore these kids down. And y'all parents ain't done no better. And then y'all still ain't making it no better by knowing what they going through over there and seeing what the happening happening is. I don't know, some of you may not even be reaching out to them kids and checking on your kids. I guess they might have gave y'all such a hard time when y'all was here that y'all so glad they gone. Y'all don't care cause they with some fucked up, with a fucked up person. I'm not saying all of them, but I know some of them. After hearing Joy's story, I was like, man, that's true. That girl, he had that girl thinking that they didn't care about her. Her parents didn't, didn't care about her. Then when she needed her parent, and she called him, the mama was there. The mama was there. The mama been there all along. But he had them so freaked up in the head that she didn't think the mama would care. I know parents, we try to let our kids go and do their own thing and be their own man and woman because they got to learn just like, you know, we had to learn. And I know that. I know that. You know that. We have to let them grow. We have to let them spread their wings. You know, and make their own butterfly colors on their wings. But don't let them go too far that you can't reach out and at least Stroke the wings on the butterfly. Don't let them go too far that you can't reach out and say, Hey, son. Hey, daughter. Are you okay? Do you need anything? We know our kids. We know what they will do and what they won't do. You should if you're paying attention to them. Unless you just don't care about them. I care about my kids. I don't care what you do to me. People say that, say that, say that, say that, say that, say that. I don't care what you do to me. You do what you want to do to me. Don't touch my kid. That's what the fuck I, I'm, I'm, I'm about that. Now, I've been on a lot of shit back when I was young. And now that I've come this far, I don't want to go back to that. But if I have to. I will when it comes to my kids. I ain't doing it for no nigga, but my kids. I drive this motherfucker through that store for my kids. I am here to tell you, if you fuck with my kids, I will kill you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bottom line, straight up and down, point blank. I will fuck you up. And I will go to jail for the rest of my motherfucking life and eat bologna. Mm-hmm. And stale ass peanut butter. Dried up ass bread sandwiches. Mm-hmm. For my kids. Mean that. But not for no man. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I won't, won't ever do that. For no man, I ain't finna hurt nobody over no damn man, but I will get your ass straight. And then you can have him. But I ain't finna kill. But on my kids, I'll kill your ass. I will kill the fuck out of you. Mm-hmm. I will do whatever the fuck I have to do to get rid of your motherfucking ass if you fuck with my cheering. I ain't scared to say that. I ain't ashamed to say that. Mm -mm. Not when it come to my babies that I laid there 
and went through hours and hours and suffered to hours and hours to bring it to this world. And then, on top of that, I had to get out here and damn near kill myself to make sure that they had the life that I wanted them to have. Took some shit off some men. Just to make sure that they lived the way I wanted them to live and grow up living. And you think I'm finna let another motherfucker come in and fuck that up with my kids? With the hard work that I've put in? Uh -uh. Them parents were too busy fighting amongst each other. Instead of doing and sacrificing for them kids and say, hey, let's just get along for the kids. When the kids ain't around, you know, we can squabble. We can go at it. But when the kids is around, let's just make it, fake it till we make it. Shake it and fake it until we're around the kids. And... I don't have to do that anymore. I used to. Because we couldn't get along. He couldn't get along. I couldn't get along. I'm not blaming it all on him. Because some of it was my fault too. But I just had to. I had to grow up from that. I had to look at my kids and say. You being selfish bitch. You being selfish. Them kids ain't done nothing to you. That man is the one who done something to you. So you're going to have to make some changes from that. And I did. And I said, you know what? I'm going to try to get along with this man. It ain't these kids' fault because uh, he they daddy. That's my fault. That's who I picked. That's who I picked to lay up in with and coochie, hoochie, coochie with. And brought them. It ain't their fault. So I got to make the best of it. So if it's, it mean me kissing his ass. I'm telling you for my kids I'll do anything. If it mean me kissing his ass. Then I'm finna be an ass kissing bitch. Puckle up. Toot that ass up. Cause here she come. For my kids only. And I tried to do that. And that wasn't good enough. He wasn't satisfied with that. That wasn't good enough for for him. Mm -mm. Wasn't good enough. No matter how hard I tried. That's because I had somebody else. Well, he had somebody else too. But I wasn't mad. I'm going to tell you. One thing about me. When I'm with you, I'm with you. I don't fuck off on you. Even if I know you fucking off on me. I'm going to sit back and let you hang yourself. I ain't going to fuck off. What good is that going to do? They ain't going to help me. They ain't going to help you. I just let you hang yourself until I get tired. Once I get tired, then I'm gone. I'm out of there. But I kiss ass, his ass, for my kids. Because I grew up without my father. And I know what it felt like to not have your father in the house with you. And then when you see him, I'm telling you, I don't care for this man. But I remember as being a little girl, when he would come around, oh, my heart would just be pedal pedal. I'd be like, you know, I just grabbed the little hearts, the little love hearts. Every day, oh, daddy, daddy, daddy. But daddy didn't give a fuck. But I still loved him. I'm a kid. I don't know no better. Until I got older. I didn't want my kids going through that. So when they was younger, I started to try to, you know, reach out to their father and say, hey, look, let's call this a man. Uh, what do I need to do? What are you so mad at me about? 
Let's fix it for our kids. Because we were stuck with each other for the rest of our life. I ain't going nowhere until God take me away. And you ain't going nowhere until God take, them, take you away. So we got to get along for the kids. Because we're going to be at birthday parties. We're going to be at weddings. We're going to be at graduations. We're going to be at parties that they have. And we're going to see each other. We're going to have to interact with each other. And I don't want to be at they functions over there, you know, acting a damn donkey. Or rolling your eyes. And cut. I don't want to do that. He didn't want to do it. Until one night my son got sick. And I didn't have him in no insurance. But the daddy was responsible for the insurance. I did have the father on child support. But when we went to uh, court... They didn't put the insurance on the uh, on the child support. And it was my responsibility to go back down there and make sure that they put the insurance on there. Now he want to be friendly with me. Now he want to come to me and say, hey, because he realized it too. Because I, I brought it up to him. You know, you're not on the insurance. You just pay child support. Well, uh, let's do this. And uh, you don't go down there and put me on the uh, on insurance. Then I take care of when they go to the doctor. Let me tell you, this man ain't no uh, rude poot ass man. This this man that I was had these babies by. This man got a you know he got a little more little money. You might not think so. People might not think. Oh, he got he got some. But I wasn't with him for that. I just want him to take care of my kids. So I'm like, okay, as long as you do your part and live by and live by uh, the word that come out your mouth. Because my father always say your word is your bone. So your word is your bone. As long as you take care of my babies, if they get sick, and just pay the child support, then we graving. Okay? Okay, he says. So we go on. I, am, I ain't gonna go long, long, long story, but we go on, and then my son gets sick. My son uh, was like me. His immune system was real, real, real low. And you sneeze on him, he, he was sick. And he even had asthma. So my son gets sick and have a asthma attack and didn't have an inhaler and I called his daddy and say hey look you know blah blah this and blah blah this and whoop 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 and you know he need to go to the doctor okay he said the daddy okay 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 I'll be there I'll be there I'll be there I'll be there so instead of him coming and taking my baby to the doctor to get him an asthma pump so they can prescribe him an asthma pump. He come over with some motherfucking abuterol that some welfare bitch young gave him and a machine for him to do a breathing treatment. So, okay, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I ain't going to, because you know me and I always say all we want to do is argue. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to keep something going. Okay, I ain't going to argue with him. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try, it. cause my baby, you know, he needs he need help right now. So let me try. It. Okay, so we get the thing and we use the little thing and the thing don't work. It's not working, and I'm telling him, I'm calling back. Hey, you know, whoop the whoop the whoop the whoop, whoop, whoop ain't working. You need a whoop the whoop whoop. Come take him, you know, through the emergency so you gonna get this pump, cause he need pump. He was with a woman when I called him. So he didn't want to leave that bitch and come take my baby to the doctor. Well, that's a problem for me. Because that ain't what you said. And I ain't about to go no doctor. You don't know how to use the thing. I know how to use the thing. I'm using the thing. The thing ain't working. The baby ain't slept all night. I've been up all night with this boy. And I refuse to go another night like this. So come on, you know, and uh, come on and get the boy and take the boy home. 
ain't going no MLB. It just turned into a whole blowed out argument. So I get pissed off. So at this time, I'm married to the second husband. So me and the second husband get him, put him in the car, take him through emergency. So while I'm back there in the back with him in emergency, I think I told this story before, but for those who hadn't heard it, want to hear it again, here we go. So I take him back there through, back there in the emergency, and the, the second husband sat out in the lobby with my daughter. So the second husband end up calling my first husband. And they, you know, had a little talk. And no, they didn't get along. And, but my second husband did. He broke down his pride and threw, you know, his pride away to talk to him because he, he had been seeing what was going on. So he did. He, he dropped his pride to do that. And I thank him for that. Thank you. Thank you. I don't mind saying thank you. So he did. He called him and they talked and I don't know what they talked about. I didn't ask. And I didn't find out till later on. They had talked to afterwards. And the second husband told me, I think we was on our way home when he told me. Or we was at the house. I don't remember, but I know he told me. But anyway, the first husband ended up coming out to the hospital. Where we was at. Before we left. He ended up coming out to the hospital. And I'm still pissed, not knowing that the first hub, second husband didn't talk to the first husband, and they done squashed their little beef, and they the second husband want me and him to squash our little old thing. So I'm still pissed when he show up out at the hospital. I mean, I'm still, I'm hot. I'm hotter than fish motherfucking grease, pork chop grease, and chicken damn grease. You hear me? Hot. The grease is hot. So we get outside, and it, I think that's what it was. The second husband started telling me I called him, and I'm like, "What?" And then he said, "Let me explain." He explained it, and I'm like, "Okay, okay, what, whatever. Okay, whatever." So the first husband he apologized, but the first husband smiled all the time. Smiled all the time. He never. Never not smiling. Even when he angry, he still got a little smirk, a little smile on his face. So we squashed it. From that point on, we've been working together. We worked together with the kids. Even they grown. We work together. If them kids come in and say, I want to go buy a new car, we don't put our name on shit. They ain't going to handicap you. They ain't put my name on shit unless you need it. But you need to start you some credit. So if they come in and say they need uh, to get another car, then hey, we take them to the car lot. And we sit in the backdrop. And we sit there and let them do their little thing. And we do as parents do. We give them knowledge. But we send them back out there to talk to that salesperson, that finance person for themselves. Now, if some numbers don't add up and don't look right, then uh, me and him will shake our head and say, uh -uh. no, you ain't finna get over on them. You ain't finna do that. We work together now as a team. And I like that. And I thank my second husband for doing that. I don't have no problem with my, my first husband. None. We get along. And it ain't just because of our kids. It was in the beginning, but now we get along, get along, get along. I don't want him. Ain't nothing he can do for me. He already gave me what I what I needed. They're my babies. But if we're going to be parents, we're going to get along for these kids. They ain't going to be doing all this jumping and hollering and cussing and fussing. No, no, we ain't gonna do that because then the kids gotta leave our nest and make their own nest and you get, guess what kind of eggs they gonna put in that motherfucking basket? The eggs that they seen us hatch. I don't want them to do that to nobody else's child and I don't want 
nobody else child to do that to them, but I know that's life. They got to experience some things. I'm willing to let them go through their experiences. That's the only way you're going to learn. But pops and that mama, y'all got a lot of issues. Y'all might need to go to some counseling. Get y'all motherfucking self some counseling first. And y'all need to get up all 10 of them damn kids that y'all fucking got. After y'all get y'all some fucking help, y'all need to get up all them damn kids that y'all fucking got. And y'all need to make sure each and every one of them kids that want to go, go get some counseling. Y'all all do it together as a family. But y'all need to do it first, single. You need to get some counseling. That woman need to get some counseling. Because that mama is still mad about something that daddy did. She think the daddy get more attention than she do. I don't know. The daddy uh feel like the mama don't work with him. If you don't work together. And if one pull this way. And one pull that way. It ain't going to work. In order to, for it to work together. And to be strong. And to stand strong, you got to work together. So in order to work together, you got to go get you some help first. You got to take care of self first. Once you get self taken care of, then work on these babies. Because y'all have did a horrible, fucked up job with the kids. Now I got to get off here and go in this store. And I've been in here, on here too long as it is. And night, Friday night, I might come back, me a little drink, I don't know. Got to see what the hell happened is. No yet. And, um, <laughs> I don't want no more to eat. Uh, I got my own food today. Uber person. <laughs> Appreciate what you done, but I'm good. <laughs> But these parents, y'all got to do better. This girl got hold to this man because what she grew up seeing. So she feel like she know it ain't okay, but she ain't got no other choice because she ain't got nobody else to run back to. She ain't got nobody to run to because y'all not being real parent and good parent. And y'all need to change that. If y'all love y'all kids, y'all got grandbabies coming. And if y'all don't get it right, it gonna grow off into them grandbabies. The same way, same thing. Same thing. It gotta stop somewhere. And who is there to stop it? Then you. You can be the one to stop it. So Mr. Marquez, I don't know what the new wife name, new name is because she said she married. Y'all need to get some help. If not, y'all family is in for fuck down all the way around. Because now them kids having, having babies. Them babies going to grow up doing the same thing and gonna run across somebody like what they got that's gonna control it. but I got my little list here that I gotta go in here and shop for with my glasses let me get my get my glasses pick up a few things I try to get out before it uh, get too damn dark. Cause these young folks, that's what I'm gonna come back and talk about too. I'm gonna come back and talk about that shit too, these young folk. These young folks off the chain. They off the hook. I'm gonna come back and I'll talk about it. But right now, let me go in here and pick up a few things from the store. <laughs> And then I'll um uh, I'll see you later. Y'all have a flaming Friday. That's what I think I'm gonna name this video. Flaming Friday. Flame it up Friday.
Wah!